Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of The Faux Show. Today is Wednesday, February 15th. My name is Angela. My name is Chris. Wow, you're right on <laughs> I felt on like just there. being right there. <laughs> and as most of you know, The Faux Show is not a real show. It is a social experience because I don't look at you. I look at the chat room, which I have here on my iPad. Mm, I've got it on my screen. It's over there on a the monitor where we can see ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I've got another one right here. It's right there, the lower third. And then we have the yeah. lower third. Best lower third on the internet because you guys are in it. Yep. It's the best one. There's not a better lower third out there. Yep. So tonight we are doing um, a show about going paleo. And paleo is a specific type of, I don't want to say diet per se. I would like to say lifestyle change. <laughs> yeah. Because it really is a lifestyle change. Yeah. And we've been talking about it for about a month, uh, about changing our diet, eating better. And, um, and I just in the last week have been dreading it because I did a test grocery shopping run. And, uh, well, I can't go into too much detail, but I came to a point where I said, no, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And, uh, I grew out of that. That's, yeah, that's good. Well, and we've been ramping up, uh, food wise. We've been kind of testing the waters for at least yeah. a solid week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to kind of see if we we're ready for, uh, did we jump ahead? Should we tell people kind of uh, briefly what paleo is? Sure. I have like a, you know, uh, again, so this is a, this is a way you eat. And with all these kinds of things, we're not giving you medical advice here, people. You need to just do your own research, especially with something like paleo, because it's not, uh, there's not like a mainstream media news outlet that's covering this type of diet. It's something where the collective internet, you know, people have gone out and the internet revolution, I guess is what I was going to say. People have gone out and found their own information. So it's called the caveman diet. Mm, It's equated to the caveman diet in a lot of ways. Yeah. Or, yeah, okay. Well, anyway. Um, So this is this is the evolution, I guess. You get yeah. fat, and then you get back to the thin. I think you could sum up a lot of what paleo is about in the sense that it's really about eating foods that existed when the human digestive system originally evolved. Right, and it's the hunter-gatherer. Yeah, the hunter-gatherer mm-hmm. diet. Yeah. Which means a lot of the stuff that's been invented in the last 50 to 100 years has to get cut out. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff based on grains, a lot of stuff uh, based at glutens, anything with glutens in it. Right. Uh, a lot of stuff, seed-based stuff, so your wheats and your soys. Now, you mentioned something the other day about grains that was really interesting. Do you want to tell them? Yeah, well, I mean, again, this is just what I've read online, so just take what, I've, what, I've ta- what I'm talking about here as a, with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, but the basic, the basic logic goes, and we have, we'll put some links maybe over in the Fosho page where this is posted. On the I'm, G+, yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've got some. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the basic logic goes is that the grains are, are, are essentially semi-poisoned by the plants that produce them because they want predators to get sick when they eat them in bulk. So they put a certain type of poison in the grain, so that way you're sort of at a mid-level getting something in your system that is bad for your body to, to process. And, uh, and, and these grains will go and sort of leave tears in your, in your digestive tract system as they go through your system, and then those can leach into your blood supply, and then it actually becomes an autoimmune response issue. So right. your body actually gets your, uh, your uh, immune system engaged when you eat a lot of every time you eat grain, yeah. <laughs> so it's a it's just a natural thing. I had no idea. I would have never guessed that grain grain would do that. But there's grains in like the everything. big thing. I think a lot of diets have focused on has been counting calories or fats or yeah. eliminating fats and sugars. Right, right. But there's a lot of there's a lot of data out there that shows that you're actually able to s- sustain yourself better with a slightly higher fat intake. And the body is actually better engineered at processing that type of stuff than it is with the grains and things like that. Right. So if you kind of work with what the body has been engineered to, to, to consume, you can actually see a higher efficiency in the way the body will utilize the fuel you give it. Right. So Rogai says, uh, faux Chris, Ange Petal, so you get healthy by eating poison? Lol, what? No, no, and we're cutting no, out the grains. We're, yeah, you don't eat grains. And the reason why is because they poison themselves so that when people like us eat them or other it would do you know stuff irritable stuff to our systems and prevent us from eating it further uh you know survival survival mechanism there. and it means like cutting out things like chips which sucks well no it's i mean it's even like um well not not a grain but like potatoes that is the that is big for me i don't want to cut out potatoes like i really would like to have potatoes still and one of the tricky things about paleo is that because there's not like a specific science to it there's different sects to the community some that are more hardcore, like people that would say no salt, no sweet potatoes. Right. But then there's other areas of the and paleo. no bacon because it has nitrates. Right, right. And there's other areas of the paleo, com- paleo community who are like, bacon all the way, uh, you know, sweet potatoes and everything you make. So mm-hmm. it's, it's also difficult. It's challenging to sort of navigate that as well. Uh, 
They have uh, they have they have what's called really what we're starting today though, which is kind of the big news is they have a kind of popular in the paleo circle is a uh, 30 day challenge. Yep, we're doing a 30 day challenge, and it's a uh, let's see outlined in oh well this isn't the 30 day challenge, but this is what we can eat. <laughs> So um, it's broken down um, into proteins, fats, um, meat. Oh, I guess that's protein. Um, carbohydrates, because there are some carbohydrates like in vegetables and fruit. Um, and then it even has like a don't eat category. Mm, that's which the depressing are, side. Are like the obvious things, you know, can- a lot of dairies. candy, honey, fruit drinks, soft drinks, whatever. That's the other thing is uh, I quit drinking soda like before the end of the year, uh, 2011. I've had you know, like maybe five sodas since then. So mm. I didn't quit it completely, but I did stop that, uh, you know, amount of sugar and caffeine. Well, what's that? What, it's called a one liter, right? That, that bottle that it's not, I think it's the size bigger than the can, but it's not a two liter thing. I don't know what pop. you're talking about. Thing, a thing of pop, you know, not the two liter size, but the, what's the size in between a can and a two liter? Oh yeah, it's one. A one, one liter. liter. So a one liter contains as, of a Coca-Cola ch- contains as much sugar as what somebody in the 1800s would consume in five days. Right. In one pop. Right. So you think the sugars, you think about how long our bodies, just as a race, have been around to process the foods we eat. We just, evolutionary, just from an evolutionary standpoint, haven't really evolved to the point where we can handle diets like that. Right. So it's hard on the body. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it was really hard to prepare for because... Well, we uh, like our was. cheeses. We like our pastas. Yeah, there's no dairy. And there's today no is pasta. the start of that 30-day yeah, challenge. Yeah, today we started it. I have pictures of each of our meals from today, but I think I want to talk about some other stuff. Oh, okay. I like think? showing. Well, okay. I like right. showing pictures. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Here. All right. So this was my breakfast. Which I think is a little lean. I think you should add some meat up in that thing. Well, somebody said he would cook breakfasts and dinners. Yeah, I know. I didn't cook today. And didn't. Yeah, I was busy. I'm sorry. So um, a banana. A uh, cutie orange, which is just a mini orange without seeds, and um, walnuts. And then this was my lunch. And the salad was actually bigger than what it looks like here. It was, I couldn't believe how big it was and that I was still eating it. <laughs> it was oven roasted turkey with Roma tomatoes um, diced and yellow pepper diced up. And it's romaine lettuce with spinach leaves mixed in it. And let's see, celery and green onions. No dressing. No cheese, no, no any kind of carbs. Yeah. And this was dinner. It's not as aesthetically pleasing, but it was um, pineapple marinated chicken, um, and then uh, peppers and pe- onions. Yeah, red and yellow peppers, onions, and pineapple, and then we just put that on a cookie sheet in the oven for a little bit, mm-hmm. and ate it like that. Yeah, it was good. It was good. And I also made uh, fresh guacamole, uh, which was paleo safe. And uh, there's a there's a shot there <laughs> there's a shot of it in progress yeah. of getting eaten. And uh, I won't lie to you, I ate most of it on bacon. I cooked bacon. Mm-hmm. Then just dip, took the bacon and dipped it in the guac. Well, one of the things about paleo is using fats appropriately and in place of maybe some other oils that would be seed based and so i cooked bacon so that way i then have oil to make other things with right oh yeah we we put the bacon grease kind of on the vegetables yeah we save the bacon grease for other cooking and stuff like that and mm-hmm. in the morning i'll use the bacon grease to make eggs and and so on and so forth so it sounds like all the things that we've all been this was the hardest i think mind shift is all the paleo stuff sounds like things that we've been programmed against <gasps> what you're gonna use bacon grease to cook yeah. eggs that yeah. sounds that doesn't sound like it's good for you at all but I think it fits. We'll see at the end of my 30-day challenge. There, uh, yeah, yeah. We had to go. We had to go on a shopping expedition though to to get all kind of suited up. All right. So here, here. This is. Uh, hmm. I can't zoom that out at all. Let's try this. You can shrink it down. Yeah. So we went to Costco because we want to buy things in bulk, and I figure. I figure we'll buy like, you know, a bunch of one vegetable this week, but then just not have it next week. That way we don't have too bad of burnout. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, so here is the oh, still cut off, but that's all right. Chris it's picking me. out garlic. Because garlic is like one of the best things to <laughs> to season things with. And then this will open too big. There's uh the kids in the cart. Here, I'll I'll uh, I'll switch on and off for you while you do it. Okay. There we go. That's our yeah, that's our cart full of paleo stuff. So you can see we've got like pineapple in there, green beans, oranges, apples, peppers, 
very healthy, which does kind of mean because it's so healthy, it has a, uh, um, it's a little cheaper because there's less things you can buy. This was this was the hard moment, and unfortunately. <laughs> They had the vanilla chocolate muffins back again. <laughs> Which are my favorite. Yeah. And I really like their chocolate muffins too. Um, yeah, that was that was hard. Uh, let's see, I think I'll skip that one. We got some frozen fish from there too. Mm -hmm. It has some seasoning on it, but This is a good moment. I like this moment. Okay, hold on. Go. This is uh, us at Costco, and that's the what you can't eat on the paleo list, and I'm pretending like I'm going over it with Dylan right there for the camera. And Dylan's doing a good job pretending that he's listening. <laughs> yeah. So that, I thought was, that was a good moment, I thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, uh, this is yesterday. So today's the first day of oh, no. our... Well, wait, did we go to Costco yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this was yesterday before we w shopped at Costco. <laughs> right. And this is... So today's the beginning of our 30-day challenge. Just see if we can do the paleo thing for 30 days. So yesterday... <laughs> and she had herself a slice of pizza. <laughs> Heck yeah. I mean, that is just plain cheese pizza. And it is so good. I grabbed my camera. Oh my I, said, I said, hey, Ange. Snap. I said, yeah, <laughs> I was like, uh. That could be one of the last slices of pizza you eat for a long time. Yeah. And I, was, I had myself a Costco dog. A Polish dog. Costco dog. And, uh, oh, that's not the shot I thought it was. But we ended up getting $45 worth of nuts. Because yeah. nuts are a good protein, they're a good snack. Yeah. Um. And I, you know, even though they, it was forty five dollars worth of um three different types of nuts, it's cheaper than I would be able to get anywhere else. I guess it still seems and so it's expensive. It's not salted. For a bag, a couple of bags of nuts. Well, okay, it's walnuts, pecans, and pine nuts, which I'm not even sure if I like pine nuts. We'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it's know. good for salads, so yeah. hopefully that'll spice up a salad. Yeah. So we're not gonna like overly do salads. We're gonna do things like um lettuce sandwiches yeah which uh just i guess without cheese but you know if you put tomato on there like it provides enough juice that you don't need mayonnaise or mustard or in my case cream cheese so um so i want to talk about something called uh, uh uh when you're ready okay go ahead uh how would you pronounce that i think it's celiac celiac celiac, celiac yeah celiac disease yeah so celiac disease is actually something you can get from eating too many grains and things like that. So there's an actual oh, disease I didn't actually out there. Know that. Yeah, there's an actual disease out there that uh, it it tears up your immune or your immune system. It tears up your uh, intestines, which then causes immune system issues, it causes inflammatory. And so, what some of the stuff that paleo is based around is the idea that at a at a lower level, this kind of stuff is happening to all of us all the time. Mm -hmm. I think, and 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 so that's kind of that an makes interesting. Sense. Yeah. So that's so there's some interesting science behind it there. Um. Celiac, I think, yeah. Celiac is how you pronounce it. Yeah. Now, I exited this. The other thing that I found that would kind of was an eye-opener was uh, there's a statistic. You'd have to Google it. There's a statistic out there about Native Americans and how much higher oh, of yeah. a rate they are to get diabetes, um, especially when they eat processed meat, like Spam. It's almost something like 50% well, higher chance to get diabetes. Yeah, a it, 50... could be, it, could, it should be framed differently. So the United States, <laughs> um, what is the word? Um. Oh my gosh! I don't know. They um subsidize. Yeah. Okay. They subsidize spam to the um tribal people. Yeah. <laughs> to the Native Americans. To the Native Americans, and now because you know it's like it's I don't know if it's free to them, but it's a definite low cost. They eat a lot of it, and now they have a crazy amount of diabetes, and they have linked it to the consumption of spam. Yeah, and the thing that's interesting about that too is again that goes back to well, what would probably cause that is that they their their digestive systems evolved during a time where there was nothing like that, you know, and and you just kind of have to extrapolate in some sense if that could happen to them, it could happen to us. Um, yeah, here's the here's the story. Minnesota Fats says spam is gluten free. Minnesota Fats. Yeah. Spam meat tied to diabetes risk in Native American study finds. That's a weird picture. Native Americans are especially high risk of developing diabetes with nearly half of the con nearly half of Native Americans having the condition by age 55. Yeah, that that is really too bad. I I just can't even I can't even put, wrap my brain around it. No, that's really. extremely tragic is what yeah. it is. Um Wait, where's my zoom? Processed meat is just, you know, it's not like it's that bad, but Okay, so then you got you get to thinking um why does a salad cost more than a Big Mac, right? Because that's totally what we were talking about. 
<laughs> yeah, that sounds exactly like what we were talking about. Um, okay, so that's too big. <laughs> All right, there we go. It costs more because of subsidies, <laughs> which is why I brought it up because of the, you know, we we're talking about spam. So meat and dairy is subsidized more than even grains, which I was surprised by, and then more than sugar, oil, starch, and alcohol. Nuts and legumes and vegetables and fruits have the smallest percentage there on the left uh, triangle. Hmm. Like it's, you almost can't even see it. Vegetables are just getting the bone. And fruit, yeah. And then, but then when you look at the um, federal nutrition recommendations here behind us, grains, they, vegetables. Yeah, which, yeah, 11 servings of grains. Who came up with that anyway? But anyway, uh, nine servings of fruits and vegetables, yet it's the smallest section over here and then um you know sugar oil salt is the use sparingly um so anyway that's just kind of food for thought but it does suck that the healthier food costs way more than processed food mm -hmm. like it's not it's not handled as much and it's better for you and so then it's not as expensive uh you know for the community as a whole for like medical bills and such like it's just ah it's so crazy yeah yeah, it is. It is pretty wild that the subsidized, the subsidized, the subsidization, 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 subsidization. Sub wow, you. I, I know, right? Say it. Once, once it's messed up, it's hard to say. Of meat is is pretty is really something. Yeah, meat being subsidized is really something. McDonald's got in trouble for this. Yeah. So, do you guys recall? Oh no, that's not what I thought it was. Okay. Oh yeah, no, no. This is so McDonald's ran an ad saying. Um, that its food is less risky than petting a pit bull. And of course, uh, PETA and all the other, you know, animal rights activists were all over that. And like, uh, a Facebook group called pit bulls against McDonald's opened up and had like, <laughs> you know, some crazy amount of people <laughs> joining it all day. Anyway, they removed the ad and said, you know, Hey, we're sorry. But the important thing here though, is where they say. McDonald's announced earlier this week that it will stop using what Chef Jamie Oliver referred to as pink slime, the meat byproducts treated with ammonia Yay. hydroxide to kill um, E. coli and other bacteria. The company issued a statement stressing its commitment to food safety. So supposedly, supposedly they won't do that process anymore. They won't pulverize, you know, whatever bone and miscellaneous parts are left yeah, over. Yeah, that's so gross. Have you seen that? And then, yeah, and then, yeah, no, it's just so gross. It looks it like so paste. Gross. It looks like, it looks like, yeah. it looks like a uh, putty. But, so that's good. I'm glad they're changing that, but I, I'm not, I'm still not going to eat it. <laughs> Especially, of course, now that we're not on, or now that we're on this diet. Um, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, oh, let's do the, the YouTube video. Okay. Are you, uh, do you want to talk about too about what your goals are about changing up your food habits or what? Like what? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, like one thing I think will happen though is I think we'll have a lot less waste yeah. in the house. Um, will uh, most of the foods that we'll eat are perishable? So how much of this do you want to watch? Oh, here I'll just take over the mouse and I'll browse to it. All right. Okay. Yeah, I I think we'll have a lot. Are you ready to start it? Um, let me look. Yeah. Yeah. Might right. as well. By the end of this short lesson, you you'll be able to explain the answers to the following questions to your friends. Why are acid reflux medications one of the fastest growing groups of medications in the U.S.? Why is it that Americans have the highest calcium consumption in the world, yet poor bone health? How can a diet soda with zero calories make you gain weight? Here's the second thing that'll change your life. Are you ready? Every food or beverage is alkaline, acidic, or somewhere in between. Alkalinity and acidity are measured in terms of pH, which stands for potential of hydrogen. This is a pH scale. It ranges from 0, the most acidic, to 14, the most alkaline. For example, let's consider the following pH values. Your stomach acid is 1, diet soda is 2.5, coffee 3, water 7, your blood ranges from 7.35 to 7.45, seawater is 8.5, and baking soda is 12. Ideally, human blood should be slightly alkaline, between 7.35 and 7.45 on the pH scale. Your body won't allow your pH to become imbalanced. 
If it did, you would die. Your body has built-in mechanisms such as respiration, perspiration, urination, and mineral depletion, which keep it in balance. The trouble begins when your body has to work overtime to maintain balance. An imbalance is primarily due to the overconsumption of acid-forming foods and beverages, as well as unhealthy stress. We consume considerably more acid-forming than alkaline-forming foods and beverages. We consume too much coffee, caffeine, soda pop, beer, alcohol, processed foods, fried food, high fructose corn syrup, sugar, artificial sweeteners, and animal proteins, just to name a few. In addition to our unhealthy food and beverage choices, we live in a world that keeps speeding up, potentially leading to high levels of unhealthy stress, which also increases acidity. Foods and beverages run the gamut of the pH scale. There are a few general rules. Animal products are for the most part acidic. Let's look at ice cream, cheese, yogurt, beef, lobster, chicken, pork, shellfish, venison, and fish. Vegetables and fruits are primarily alkaline. Let's look at snow peas, spinach, tomatoes, lettuce, squash, potatoes, cabbage, broccoli, asparagus, and sweet potatoes. And fruits, let's look at oranges, bananas, grapes, cherries, grapefruit, mangoes, raspberries, watermelons, lemons, and limes. I know you're thinking we got this wrong. Lemons and limes are acidic, right? Well, the classification of whether a food or beverage is acidic or alkaline is based on the effect it has on the body after digestion. For example, lemons are extremely acidic in their undigested form. However, their end product after digestion is more alkaline, making lemons alkaline forming in the body. A simple way to increase the alkalinity of a glass of water is to add a slice of lemon or lime. Let's see where popular drinks fall on the pH scale. We have soda, beer, coffee, beer. alcohol, and tea. And how about water? Well, let's look at distilled water, bottled water, spring water, and mineral water. Another general rule is the more processed the food, the more acidic it will be. However, just because a food or beverage is acidic doesn't mean it's unhealthy. Blueberries and walnuts are both acid-forming foods, but they have tremendous health benefits. It's more important to pay attention to the overall trend. Remember when we said Americans eat a diet rich in acidic foods? Let's examine some typical American meals. How about a burger, french fries, and a soda? Or a steak, baked potato, and glass of wine? Or what about fried chicken, baked beans, corn, and a beer? Or okay. the all-American picnic of a hot dog, potatoes, and a salad, chip soda. These meals force your body into an acidic state. So let's bring this all together. What happens when your diet is too acidic? All right, should we leave it? We'll leave the rest in the show notes if you guys want to catch the rest of that video. Yeah, it's... Anyway, so you probably learned a lot already. <laughs> but basically, yeah, your body is compensating for all that crap processed foods you're eating because it's all really highly acidic. Um, it has to steal from the other uh, minerals and whatever that you have in your body that are alkaline in order to balance it out. Hmm. And that's why we feel crappy and tired. And that's why we have acid reflux, like, hmm. like it mentioned. Because, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But all right. So um, anyway, what I was saying right before we switched to the video is I predict we'll have less waste, less waste in the house because we're not going to be buying, you know, boxes of cereal. <laughs> Right. Or boxes of breakfast bars, et cetera. You know, so a, a lot less boxes. And uh, less like um, little like uh, frozen thingies and, you know, all that kind of stuff that just has wrappers. And yeah, all well, that. we'll have frozen vegetables because we're not oh, always yeah. going to have fresh. No, I'm just cause... mean like all the stuff that like you take out of the box and you put it in the, you put it in the oven for a certain amount of time and it comes oh, yeah, with like yeah. a wrap and all that. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I also, let's see, what was my other prediction? I'm trying to remember. Well, we started composting, so that's the other thing, and that we're really excited to do that because hopefully we'll be able to start our own garden. Uh, what? How long does it take? For so I got the special kind of compost. I got the vermin composter. We should get some usable dirt in about three or four months. Okay, sweet. But we can go pick up dirt in the meantime. Mm -hmm. This is just sort of like so we can sustain soil. our own dirt. Yeah, yeah. This will be soil. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. No box tops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, you didn't think about that. That's funny. <laughs> 
That is funny because, yeah, I collect those from my uh, cousins. So I'll tell you, my goals are my goals are to lose weight to help with my sleep apnea. Right. And that's really what my goal is. Right. Because, yeah, because like a week and a half ago, I reminded him that he's scarring his brain by starving of oxygen every night. And he's keeping me up. And now that Abby's finally sleeping through the night, I really want to get some good sleep. Um, and, you know, the mask, it really does. You don't flail around as much at all. Really? Yeah. And that's probably why you're waking up with back pains and I am. And it is because, hurting. Yeah. It is. But it's good for me because I don't wake up. <laughs> but I am now that I lay in one spot, I hurt. I know. Yeah. I need to rotate in order to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I hope to lose a little bit of weight too because uh, I was it, my weight's kind of getting out of control. I feel, but um, but that's not the main reason. I do want to eat better. I want to feel better. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah. Well, we've noticed too. Uh, so I'll tell you, you know, so like I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, we've been kind of experimenting with eating paleo for like the last week. And when we would stop, because we were just sort of testing. And I, so we would go, like, we would have a day where I would have like this awesome breakfast and an awesome lunch. And then we would totally blow it on dinner. Or, or we right. or would go like awesome, awesome dinner, awesome breakfast the next day. And then I'd blow it on lunch. Right. Mm-hmm. And oh man, could I feel it? My gut mm-hmm. would just bubble. Yeah. So I'm wondering well, at the end of these 30 days, when we go to have something, like you might go through some gut wrenching pains. Yeah. Like yeah. what I go through when I eat too much dairy, you might have that. Yeah, I bet. Uh, so there's so that that might be kind of interesting. So yeah, if I could lose a little weight, maybe get a little uh, fe- feeling a little better. Although I don't really feel that bad now that I'm getting some sleep. <laughs> That's been a big help right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Same here with getting sleep. Sleep is really important. Mm-hmm. So um, we're not like focusing on exercise. You know, we're not going to go out and get memberships or anything like that. Um, I'll what? Bro, guys, there's no more epic man poops if you eat right. Is that worth it? Is it? <laughs> yeah, um, something to consider. Anyway, uh, you know, I'll go on walks with the kids and, and stuff, but I'm, I'm not going to like focus on on exercise yeah. at this yeah. point. Although it yeah. uh, uh, I, I just read an article today that was released that uh, it was on Slashdot that said that uh, it kind of confirmed uh, types of exercises that work really well. And there's some that say mm. people say go grow with paleo. So it might be something we look into at hmm. some point. Yeah. Oh, and you can bake with paleo. There's like recipes for paleo cookies. I'm sure they don't taste very good because you, <laughs> you really can't use sh- any kind of sugars. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I haven't. Have you looked at the ingredients? Well, some of them, so this is kind of where it goes back to a pay, people, one of the things people do with paleo is they just try to follow it the best they can. And so like these people used honey instead of sugar, oh, even though you're not okay. really supposed to use honey, but like yeah. if you're going to use something, honey's better. Right. If it's real honey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's real honey. Because, you know, all like a lot of the brands, uh, off brands, honeys in the store are not real. It's a corn syrup concoction. So. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, all right. Well, I think think i've got a video that i want to include uh maybe you could put it at the bottom of all the links that we're going to put out okay it's because it's 16 minutes long oh, yeah. but it was That's one of the long. videos that really uh it, it it really is a good video and it really links together a lot of different elements about our current state of our food this guy it's a ted talk so if you guys are familiar with those oh, those yeah. are those are I always like good those. stuff and uh this guy g- g- goes up on stage and links together the increase in corn production, the increase in sugars in our foods, the increase in fats ties in together things like diabetes and, and weight gain and then compares uh, a weight gain amongst Americans from a sampling in you know, the 1980s and a sampling in the 1880s and, and really shows a lot of interesting trends about, about how our food has changed in just really the last 70 years mm-hmm. um, and how, how kind of a big deal that really actually is. Uh, in fact, he goes in, one of the interesting points he brings up is how uh, grocery stores, for the most part, didn't exist until the 1920s. Yeah. And so commercialized, mass-produced food didn't really exist in the 1920s. And that's an interesting point when you think about, uh, you know, how long how? our bodies have had to process this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, not very long, <laughs> really, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, not very long at all. Yeah. Just but a moment in time. So anyways, great video, but it's 16 minutes long. Mm-hmm. It's a quick 16 minutes, so, so we'll conclude the link in the... Oh, show, show notes. Yeah. So um, I took note of my weight uh, this morning and Chris took uh, Will uh, tonight. tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll track that and uh, we'll, sh- we'll continue sharing our meals if you guys are interested in, you know, attempting at least partially the diet. You don't have to do it all the way. And we might, you know. Oh, yeah. You guys could totally do it with us and yeah. we could, yeah, share your progress. We'll kind of give like a little mini updates as we go. Yeah. I'm not sure where to put the pictures, though. Yeah, I don't know. You know, but Ram Drive I, makes okay, a good back. point in the chat room. People have eaten corn for thousands of years. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a great point. You can't argue with logic like that. Yeah. Well, corn is like notorious for being not digestible. So I'm not sure what your point is. Like you know. it's eatable, edible, but it does it's not digestible. Uh, really? I mean, I'm sure everything is fine as long as you do it in moderation. The 30-day challenge is really kind of a hardcore period, but then once we get beyond that 30 days, I'm probably going to have a beer yeah. from time to time, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to kind of corn's going to work its way back in in bits and pieces. Although it, the 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 uh, the, uh, the unescapable truth of things like high fructose corn syrup and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you go look into how much of the, everything we eat today has high fructose corn syrup in it, people. And that Seriously. crap was developed. And cellulose, you know, trees. High, tree fructose, high fructose corn syrup was originally designed to fatten up farm animals. And now it's in all of our food. Well, hmm. So, I mean, what's that tell you? Yeah. That was its original design. In fact, More you can... More meat. I was going back. I was going back. Uh, oh, that's another I have a video of this. I probably should have. I should have thought of this. I have a video you can find of the U.S. Agriculture Department coming out and saying how they've developed this great, this great new way they're going to fatten up cattle to increase food production. So Right. What were you going to say? Um, that was the other thing, though. Um, we are getting our meat from the local butcher. We're not buying it, you know, from the frozen section of the grocery store or... Even Costco, like we're not buying it from there. We're we're buying all of our stuff, including our eggs, from the local butcher, which is really neat. We we trust it. Yeah, that is another good thing. So, so I guess we'll let people know how it goes. Yep, yep. We'll do a you know like we did with uh, J Man. We do a monthly weight update or whatever. We will. Well, I guess we might do a, an update more frequently. Maybe, yeah, maybe weekly. I'm not sure. If there's something, to if report. there's progress. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, so. If you have not signed up for Jupiter Signal, what are you doing? You should do it. Oh my gosh. Uh, it came out today. What? And I'll be posting it on all my social sites. So if you follow me anywhere, you can um, get a link to it. And in the upper left hand corner, there's this big sub- subscribe to list and also view past issues. So you can see, you know, the previous oh, yeah. newsletters as well. But anyway, so uh, I cover cool, fun stuff like Minecrafting in there. Yep. See that? There's my avatar. So hot. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> With green eyes even. Very nice. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a fun way to keep, uh, keep uh, up yeah. with what we're doing. And yeah. uh, there's usually a community content section. And this time it was YouTube said what. Sometimes I pull comments out of the IRC chat room. And other times... Uh, uh, I don't think there are other times. <laughs> IRC chat room, YouTube, yeah. I guess that's it. Well, we so, also have our website we can pull comments from. Yeah. Um, and then here at the bottom here, I've got Ronald Jenkins, And he is, uh, that's the music you heard right before, or right when we were going live. And uh, we use some of his music for our intros. Mm-hmm. And of course, with his permission. And now we're pimping his uh, album there. So if you like the music that we have on some of our shows, that might be it, and you can try to get it mm. as well. Dr. Koss says he has some issues on his Android phone. Now, we tested on Android devices, so I'm not yeah. sure why you get that, but we'll look. We will, we will have to look. He has so, issues. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Don't forget that next month's award show is What is Your Favorite Beverage and Why? Uh, keep your story limited and, uh, let's say, pictures, three or less pictures. I probably should have mentioned this before we got this far. What? We have the JB Weight Loss subreddit where people can go oh, and put yeah. their like uh, nommy nom uh, healthy food right. recipes Good. or their stories in there. So uh, yeah, so that's reddit.com or you can just go to jbweightloss.reddit.com actually. Okay. And that'll find it for you. Cool. All right. Well, um, oh, well, so yeah. Email Angela at jupiterbroadcasting.com for your beverage of choice and why submission. That is it for this episode. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, you can catch recent episodes of The Faux Show on jupiterbroadcasting.com slash faux show. Also, get them on demand in the iTunes store. Search for Faux Show.